So hello, everyone. It's great to be here at Network Field Day. Uh, it's always great to be here. And I'm Mansoor Karam. You know me, uh, Vice President of Products now uh, at Juniper, former co-founder and CEO of Abstra. Uh, so last time we presented at Network Field Day, we were an independent company. So what I thought I'd do uh, is say a few words as to why at Abstra we're enthused about being part of Juniper. And then I'll hand it over to Jeff Tensura, who will be showing the product at work. So, you know, let's start with the customer. It always starts with the customer. What are their pain points? Uh, the key pain points they're telling us they have all pertain to operational complexity. Essentially, network operators and engineers are struggling with the trade-off between agility on one hand, that is doing things quickly to meet business demand, and reliability on the other hand, that is doing them right, avoiding mistakes that can cause those disastrous outages that we often hear about in the news. And so they're looking for solutions that would allow them to deliver both quickly and reliably. So that's number one. Also, they're struggling with constrained vendor choice. Simply put, lock-in. If you think of your typical customer, they're likely to have a dual vendor strategy. Yet, the overwhelming majority of management solutions on the market today only work with one vendor. Ultimately, what customers need is the right software that allows for a small numbers of architects and operators to deliver on the speed of the business without the risk of causing outages and without locking themselves completely into one vendor. And this, this is exactly what Abstra has built. So now let's look at it from Juniper's perspective. Juniper is keenly aware of the importance of such software and that they need to transform their sales motion from hardware-led to software-led, focusing on delivering a simple operational model. This is fully consistent with Juniper's experience first mantra. In fact, Juniper has started on this journey a couple of years ago with the acquisition of Mist, which was first and foremost about their AI, AI technology, as you've seen today, essentially software rather than simply Wi-Fi. And they're continuing on this journey this year in the data center with the acquisition of Abstra. And so with Abstra, Juniper leaps ahead in software for operating the data center. As you guys are well aware, Abstra pioneered intent-based networking and we built the first and only intent-based networking product on the market. Essentially the key software piece that delivers on this unmatched experience, operational simplicity and efficiency. And Abstra embodies all aspects of intent-based networking. We've presented this to you many times before, this fun foundational single source of truth, closed loop validation, intent-based analytics, and root cause identification. This now gives Juniper a unique play for day two operations. And multi-vendor capability. This is a key tenant to intent-based networking. It's a key requirement from our customers. It's unique to Abstra and now unique to Juniper as well. This enables us to support not only Junos, but also other switch operating systems such as Sonic, which we believe has a potential to become an important ingredient of future cloud data centers. So in short, at Juniper, we fully understand that today's data center solution must start with software. Uh, and we're now armed with the best of breed differentiated software to address this need. How about Abstra? Why did it make sense for Abstra? So at this junction of our journey, we're ready to take this vision to the next stage. Our goal is to make intent-based networking part of every data center network on the planet. We would like nothing less that, than for every network engineer, architect, or operator to experience and benefit from the outcomes that our customers are experiencing today with intent-based networking. And it became clear to us that to achieve this, we needed the reach. Build it on our partnership with Juniper, and the work we have done together with customers such as T-Systems, it has become clear that being part of a larger motion would fuel and progress towards achieving this vision. And so we've been at Juniper for a month now. Uh, and I'll tell you, we're seeing promising early signs validating our thesis. While we're still, of course, in the midst of an integration effort across all functions, we've hit the road running and we have been closing deals, meeting with customers, who are both evaluating and adopting Abstra for their data center needs. 
it's clear there is significant customer interest from existing Juniper customers, but also from net new customers. But I'll tell you what I find even more satisfying is what we're hearing from our, the outcomes our customers are achieving in deploying Appstra. I'll just mention one recent example, a particular customer who was able to stand up Appstra in 30 minutes and get to a fully operational, fully automated network in one morning. One morning, truly powerful stuff. In short, combining forces with Juniper makes sense. It makes sense for our customers, it makes sense for Appstra, and it makes sense for Juniper. But rather than having you hear me speak, uh, let's see the product at work. Jeff, uh, please take it away. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And it'd be great to be back. And there's nothing more exciting than real-time demo. So what we are going to see in 10 minutes, going from number of just interconnected switches to fully functional EVP and VXLAN fabric that provides L2 and L3 segmentation and all the validations. User intent here is to build large fabric that also addresses all the requirements with regards to port density over subscription. All servers are have to be dual homed, transparent VM migration must be supported and future growth. So the physical instantiation of such network is a five stage two pod single plane leaf spine. Uh, for this demo, it's reasonably small, eight switches in total for leaf to spines to super spines. And this is what has been pre-instantiated for you. What we are going to see here, how business logic, how the virtual part of network comes through. What we are going to do here is we are going to create one tenant that spans all of data center bus pods, one bridge overlay virtual network. So there's no routing and potentially you would need something like firewall connected to the fabric and one virtual network in edge routed mode that could provide routing at any switch. So it employs any has gateway. We'll also provide DCI gateway that connects to remote data center. And the last step is going to be to roll back all of network to the previous state. To visualize what you just explained, you're going to see empty network that just has connection among them and has underlay configured. We are going to create tenant. We are going to connect to virtual network street. We are going to provide connectivity to remote data center and rollback. And as we say, proof is in the pudding. So let's go to the demo. And I'll be going to one of the switches, sleep one in this case from time to time to show you what's going on in real time. So this is the network as you see it, you see that underlay has been instantiated. You see ISANs, loopbacks, and all basic components of underlay network working. So all this information is coming as part of user intent. System allows you to define resource pools that could be manually configured, as in this case, or could be provided by higher level orchestration system. So, so far, system is pretty empty, less validate. Routing instances only management. EVP and BGP table is empty and no virtual instances. So let me go back and show you where we were. We've configured a tenant con NFD. And by configuring it, I only provided tenant name. The rest of information had been auto derived from system definitions. So what you see here is a tenant with VLAN and VNIs defined as well as route target policies. Now we are going to define virtual networks. As you could see, virtual network are empty. So again, it's going to be of type VXLAN, we'll call it red, and we'll assign it to a particular tenant, in this case, tenant NFD. So first network is bridge overlay only, hence, no IPv4 or IPv6 connectivity defined. The amount of information provided is enough. I just need to say where should it be physically connected. And in this case, I'm going to connect it to all the switches in pod one. That's all I need to do. It's really intent driven. Let's take a look at what has been configured. The VN name is red, type VXLAN. It is attached to tenant NFD. And VNI ID is 10,001, which is the next value in pool predefined. Route target is auto derived from the same value. 
let's configure secondary network. In this case, it's going to be again of type VXLAN blue. The difference here is going to route. So we are going to enable routing which will result in instantiation of any CAS gateway. So in this case, I could either use resource pool or instantiate my own pool. Let me do it myself. And then any CAS gateway IP address. And I need to attach it. In this case, I want to span it whole network. So both pod one and pod two will get connectivity. Let's validate what came up. Uh, name is blue. As you could see, the NI value is 10,002, which is the next value available in the pool. And routing in subnet 192.168.10 with virtual gateway, you would see this IP address configured on all switches connected to the network to provide seamless VM migration. At this point in time, I wanted to commit my configuration. So no configuration has been pushed yet. The user intent is first modeled and validated against existing network. Now we are going to commit. And I'll call it NFD. In order of seconds, we have deployed full network that provides L2 segmentation throughout VMs, L3 segmentation throughout tenants. What we are going to configure now is DCI gateway, usually time consuming task simplified to the degree it takes about one minute to configure. What we really need to do is give it a name because this is how we differentiate the object. IP address, ISN number, and let's give a TTL of 10, it's 10 hops away. In AAS, EVP and gateway is a logical function. So I can instantiate it on every device in the fabric. Let's say for resiliency, I want to instantiate it on leaf one, rec one, and leaf two. Now the configuration is being modeled, instantiated, and pushed to the device. This is what has been configured and pushed to the device and validated the configuration has been accepted and working. This is our gate with IP address, it's ISN, and it's attached to two devices. Now, if we go see the network itself, it shows you the diagram and connectivity mode. So what you see now is fully working network with tenant that spans all switches, one virtual network that spans only REC one and provides bridging within the REC, and another instance that spans all two pods and provides bridging and routing. What we are going to see as last is how do we revert to previous state. So we've deployed network, it's working. Now, what if I wanted to do something else? What if I want to change things? We all know and love rollback on Junos, one of the most exciting features I remember around 2004. However, you roll back per device. In IS, we roll back state of whole network. So what you see now is eight switches. It could have been 800. The ease of rollback is exactly the same. We go to time Voyager function and we decide what is the state we would like to roll back to. And I'm going to roll back to stage I call cleanup, which was the committed configuration before. We are rolling back. Before we roll back, we are going to see what's going to change. We are going to remove configuration of tenant 
and virtual networks. Let's commit it. As we go back, you see that uh, the gateway disappeared. If we go to look into virtual infrastructure, you see that there's no virtual networks or tenant. We are back to previous working state. So in 10 minutes, you've seen how you took just connected switches and created fully functional fabric with EVPN, with layer two segmentation, with layer three segmentation, with DCI gateway, and then we rolled back. And we've spent here about five minutes. You know, one thing else I'll mention is that while he was doing all of this, you know, there was this whole continuous validation loop that was happening as well in the background. And when everything is green, it means that, you know, the network is indeed working as you intended, both as he was configuring uh, the virtual networks and when he had rolled it back. Uh, and so you know, what you're seeing here is really the result of our focused efforts. And you've seen some of it along the way uh, over the last few years. Uh, but really what's exciting is looking ahead, right? I believe that now being part of Juniper gives us the tools needed to take intent-based networking to yet another level. You can also envision some of the synergies uh, with the rest of the portfolio. We now have access to advanced telemetry collection available on these Juniper platforms, uh, or think of integration, potential integrations with Mist AI. And you can also expect a continued focus on open networking, including, uh, as I mentioned, Sonic. Uh, all in all, we look forward to an exciting path ahead and to updating you all, uh, of course, along the way. Just real quick, as I'm looking at this, you know, thinking from an on-prem perspective, do you guys integrate with such as vSphere or anything like that from configuration down the host? Or is that outside of this, this uh, from, from Astra? We do integrate with both NSXT as well as vSphere. Okay. Using webhooks and API Slayer in Wisphere, we can get all the information about VLANs configured, bridge groups, locks, and we okay. validate that what has been intended and configured on host level is reflected by the fabric. If okay. there's inconsistency, you've got the red button to say, there's the source of truth, match it. With one push of red button, you'll get all the switches matching configuration on your NSXT edge or any other transport node. Okay, cool. And you can also do the reverse where I've already got a configuration. I can import it into Astra itself as well. Yes, as long as it's up to us, we provide easy button. Gotcha. Thank you. And Astra started out as a multi-vendor. Is that going to continue to be the case to support um, other vendor leaf switches or spines? Absolutely. In the demo you have seen, there was no notion of vendors. It did run on right. Juno. So if, if I could have shown you the terminal, you would have seen QFX switch. However, it is fully multi-vendor. It's intent driven and your intent was to deploy networking. If below would have been another vendor, it would still work. It's much more superior with Juniper because of unmatched streaming capabilities, amount of telemetry and really greatness of routing stack in Junos. However, it's completely multi-vendor and modeling layer doesn't really care about vendor. This is Mike Bouchon. We're not going to change that either, by the way. Just I always tell people, um, if you want to know if someone's telling the truth, you, you got to be able to see why it's in their best interest to do it. Um, Multi-vendor, from a pure business perspective, gives us the ability to insert. Otherwise, as a challenger, you have no, no way of getting into accounts. So we have strong business reasons to keep it multi-vendor anyway. So that, that, that's going to continue. Um, we'd have to, at this point, you know, if we were to break multi-vendor, it would take effort and um, so it's actually easier to stay the way we are than it is to, to go back and make things worse. But we also that's... bring unique knowledge about uh, how to make EVPN work in multi-vendor environments. So all these years I've spent in ATF working on EVPN. I brought back to Abstra and I know exactly how to make Cisco to work with Abstra, with Arista, with Juniper, and make sure the best practices of how to design data center are, in, are enforced on the network. So this is our very, very strong point and know-how. Yeah. And maybe just to add uh, to what Mike and Jeff said, as I mentioned, that's what customers want, right? They want management solutions that work not only with one vendor, but across vendors. Otherwise, they're fully locked in, right? So it's a differentiator for us and it matches what the customers want.